Amen. We thank God for his presence that's in here. Two or three gathered there. He is in the midst. Amen. We thank God for, for God not giving us the spirit of fear, but love, power, and a sound mind. Amen. And we're able to come into the house of the Lord. Amen. Everyone knows what took place in Charleston, South Carolina. Amen. There's some people that didn't go to church because of that. Amen. 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 There's sure people did. that sat at home because of that. Amen. They said, I ain't going to church no more. Amen. But we put our trust in the Lord. Amen. Amen. How many people put their trust in the Lord today? Amen. Yep. Lean not to your own understanding. Amen. This, this afternoon, if we could turn our Bibles to the book of James, chapter number four. Come on. Amen. One verse, verse number 14. Amen. God just put in my spirit, we got to contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. Amen. The Bible says, earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. Yeah. Amen. How many people know that we're in war? This is war. Right. Amen. We are warring. Amen. Come on now. We are, war. We are at war with the enemy. Amen. We're fighting for our souls. Amen. How many people know that you're fighting for your soul? Yes. Amen. In the name of Jesus. But in the book of James, chapter number 4, amen, the Bible says in verse 14, it says, Whereas ye know not what shall be on, on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeared for a little time and then vanished away. Let me read that again. It says, Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeared for a little time and then vanished away. I want to read the same verse with the Amplified Bible. Amen. The Bible says, it says, you, it says, yet you do not know the least thing about what may happen tomorrow. What is the nature of your life? You are really a puff of smoke, a mist that is visible for a little while and then disappear into thin air. Amen. You are nothing but a puff of smoke that is visible for a little while and then disappears into thin air. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you for this opportunity, God. Lord, for the saints to gather and hear your word. God, I pray, God, that you will use me as a vessel, God, that will bring forth your word this afternoon unto your people. Even those that may be monitoring, amen, on Ustream or on online, oh God. Lord, that you'll be able to teach and reach them, oh God. Let the power of the Holy Ghost move, God. For we need you in this hour. In your name we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You may be seated this afternoon. Amen. With the help of the Lord, I want to minister just, just, just for a few minutes about tomorrow is not promised. Amen. About tomorrow is not promised. Amen. I was going to, uh, I've been studying all week something different, but when I woke up this morning, God put this in my spirit about tomorrow is not promised. Amen. We all know what took place at Emmanuel African Methodist Episcopal Church in Charleston, South Carolina. Amen. But, but even with that tragedy that, that, that just took place, there's many people that have not changed the mindset about tomorrow is not promised. Amen. The truth of the matter is, is that tomorrow has never been promised. Amen. The Bible says that a man is appointed once to die, and then after that, the judgment. Amen. The statistics, amen, about death are quite impressive. Amen. Praise God. The World Health Organization states that one out of 20 adults in the world have HIV. That's 35 million people in the world are HIV positive. But when it comes to death, amen, these statistics even surpass that. Amen. The statistics tells us that one out of one will face death. Uh, amen. In other words, everybody got to go that way. Amen. Everybody may not catch AIDS, but one out of one, amen, will face death. Amen. We've got to realize, amen, that tomorrow is not promised. Amen. But what is it going to take, amen, for mankind to realize this? 
Amen. We've had the 911s, amen. We had the Hurricane Katrina's. We had the earthquakes, amen. We've had the wars and the rumors of wars, amen. We've had the church shootings. We've had the bombings, amen. We've had all kind of epidemics, amen. The bird flu, the swine flu, amen. Yeah. My God, planes disappearing, 300 people missing. What is it going to take for That's people right. to realize that tomorrow is not promised? Yeah. Come on, come on. My God, we are turning our face away, amen, from the fact that everybody on the face of this earth is going to face that day, amen, when you will not see tomorrow. Oh, my God. It should not take a disaster. It should not take a tragedy. It should not take an unexpected death of a loved one just to realize that one day we're going to check up out of here. It should not take all that, amen, for us to wake up, amen. It should take all that, praise God, for us to realize, amen, that we got to make our business right with the Lord while we are still here today. Yes, God. Oh, my God. Come on. Yes, Lord. But ever since the beginning of time, God has wanted us to know that tomorrow is not promised. Right. Amen. In the garden, amen, God told Adam, amen, for in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Right. Amen. Not even after that, but even during Noah's generation, amen, when God looked down from heaven, seen the wickedness of man, and said, I will destroy man whom I created. Amen. Right. A lot of folks did not see the next day. Amen. Right. Pharaoh and his army, amen, as they went into the Red Sea, they did not see tomorrow. Amen. Come on. Now, they were destroyed right. in the Red Sea. Right. Right. Amen. Even Hezekiah, when he was sick, amen, when the prophet Isaiah went to him yeah. and said, set thy house in order, for you shall surely die. Right. Amen. He did, my God, you may not see tomorrow right. because right. tomorrow is not promised. Right. It is not promised. Yes, amen. It is not promised. Amen. Amen. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 6, uh, it says, take therefore no thought for tomorrow. Uh, take Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Amen. Stop focusing on tomorrow. There's some things that we need to work out today. There's some people that we need to call today. There's some issues and problems that we need to bring to God today. Why? Because tomorrow is not promised. Amen. I may not be able to change tomorrow, but there's some things that's going on in my life that I can change today. Amen. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians, it says, Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Even with our salvation, we try to put that off to the next day. But even with your salvation, God is saying, Now is the day of salvation. Now is the time to get it right with the Lord. Knowing that you may not see tomorrow. My God. Look, there is an urgency. There's a clarion call that is going across the nations. Amen. Where God is saying, get ready, get ready, get ready. Amen. There's an urgency. God has an acceptable time for us to work with his grace. In other words, amen, the window of grace is open. The door of grace is open, amen. All we got to do is walk in and say, Lord, forgive me, Lord. Lord, I need you. Lord, clean me up, God. Polish me up, God. Amen. The window of grace is open, amen. But there's coming a time, amen, when the day of salvation, it will not last forever. There's going to be people that's going to be knocking just like they was knocking on Noah's door. Amen. Say, Noah, let me in. Open the arms. Let me in. There's going to be people trying to be saved, but that window of opportunity to be saved is going to be closed. Baby, we got to get it right today. My God, for the coming of the Lord is sooner than what we think. Amen. Nobody knows when he's coming, but I'm here to tell you God is soon to come. My God, we have been ignoring the fact that tomorrow is not promised. Amen. We've been ignoring the fact that we're going to stand before God and be judged. Yeah. The Bible says every man, every white man, every black man, every Chinese man, every Arabic man, every man that was ever created on the face of the earth, regardless of their gender, regardless of their, of their uh, race, amen, they're going to stand before God and be judged. Amen. We've been running around it. We've been tippy-toeing around it. We've been not wanting to deal with the fact that God is coming. Amen. And we don't want to be ready when he comes. Yes. Amen. We don't want to get ready. So in order to not get ready, we ignore it. 
Amen. That's like a bill, amen. You know you ain't got the money to pay the bill. So you take the bill and you put it in the bottom drawer and say, I'm just going to ignore that right now. But don't you know you're going to come home one day and the light's going to be cut off. Yeah. You're going to come home one day and the water's going to be cut off. Yeah. Baby, you can't ignore the fact, amen, that you got something that you got to deal with. And that's your salvation yeah. because the day is the day of salvation. Come on. My God. Look, you know, it's something about the mindset, praise God, of, of, of the people that's in this world. Amen. As we was coming to church, amen, parks is full of people. Amen. Swimming pools is full of people. Amen. If you go to the uh, recreation facilities, I bet you they're full of people. The mall probably got people in there. Amen. People are, are not concerned about salvation. They're not concerned about their relationship with God. Amen. The Bible gives us examples in the book of Luke chapter 12. Amen. Verse number 16. It talks about the ground of a certain rich man. How it brought forth abundantly. Amen. And he thought within himself, what should I do? Since I got all these fruits and all these vegetables and I got all these things that, that I have now, what, what am I going to do? And he said that I will build me bigger barns, that I will store the goods that I have. Amen. And then, my God, Jesus came along to this man. And Jesus told him, and my God, in Luke 12, verse number 20, he said, Thou fool, amen, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall these things be? which thou has provided. In other words, amen, amen. Yes, you may have a nice house. Yes, you may have a nice job. Yes, you may have nice clothes, amen. But my God, thou fool, amen, what are you going to do with these things, amen, on the day of salvation when you take your last breath? Amen, I, I can imagine, amen, that Bill Gates, amen, had all kind of plans with the money that he had saved up. I can imagine how Howard Hughes, another millionaire, billionaire, had all kind of plans with the money that he had. But my God, when death comes knocking at the door, amen, your plans of what you was going to do with those materialistic things, that's out the window, baby. Amen. You trying to say, give me time. You trying to say, find me somebody, a man of God, a woman of God that can pray with me. What must I do to be saved? If you ever face death, amen, it'll cause you to get right. If trouble knocked on your door, it'll cause you to repent. It'll cause you to get baptized. It'll cause you to seek God for the Holy Ghost. If you ever had a sickness in your body, amen, and the doctor told you, amen, you may not live six months, amen, I guarantee it, nobody's going to run across your mind, now I need God, I need God in my life, ain't no pill, ain't no doctor, ain't no therapy, but I need the power of God to heal me. Right, come on. My fool, this night, thy soul is required of you. Jesus called him a fool. A fool is someone who lacks understanding. A fool is someone that lacks judgment. A person without truth. A fool, in my God, is someone that will take their materialistic things, their houses, cars, and clothes, and place them above the things of God. Amen. I got to have my boat. I got to have my pleasure. I got to have my recreation. I don't have time to go to church because I work through the week. And when weekends comes, it's all about me and my family. But who blessed you, amen, to have those things? Right. Amen. It wasn't you that went out and did them, amen, because God could have stopped your heart at any second. But who blessed you, amen, amen, to give you the ability to obtain these things, these riches, these wealths, amen. You didn't do it on your own, amen. You could have been born deaf. You could have been born dumb. You could have been born blind. You could have been born without a brain, amen. My God, but God was the one that blessed you with these materialistic things. So how dare you say my crops and my barns, amen, my goods, amen, everything that I have, amen, I'm going to just have a plan with it and eliminate God from the plan. My God. Look. This fool said, my crops, my barns, and my soul. Amen. Notice what he said. Amen. In Corinthians, he said, my crops, my barns, my goods, and my soul. Everything is about him and for him, and nothing is about God. Isn't that how our world is today? It's all about me. It's all about what I can obtain. Amen. How I can get the edge on someone else. Amen. How I can get, amen, the things that I desire. And not about the things of God. Everything that he said was his, he lost. He lost his crops, he lost his barns, he lost his goods, and he lost his soul. 
Amen. Now, what do you mean he lost his soul? Well, who gave him a soul? Jesus, come on. Who gave him the soul? Amen. Yeah. Amen. Who gave him the crops? Amen. Who gave him the barns? Who gave him the goods? The same one that gave him the soul. Uh-huh. My God, when God made man, he breathed in his nostrils the breath of life, and man become a living soul. And that soul is what has to be right when God comes back. If your soul ain't right with the Lord when he comes back. Amen. My, my, my. But you got to get your soul right with the Lord before it comes. Jesus asked him in verse 20. He said, who shall those things be which thou hast provided? Because it's quite evident that naked we came into this world. And naked we shall return. We can't take this stuff with us. Even his own soul he couldn't take with him. My God. So I'm convinced, amen, just like, praise God, in the book of Exodus, amen, when the death angel came, amen, God had a plan for his people. God told him the plan. He said, look, Moses, go tell the people to go get them a lamb, amen, a yearling of the flock, amen, take that lamb, amen, take the blood of the lamb and put it up on the doorpost. And then everybody that's in your family go into the house, amen, cut up the lamb, Amen. Roast it with fire. Roast it with unleavened bread. Amen. Get some unleavened bread. Amen. And get some bitter herbs. Amen. And begin to eat the lamb. And don't leave nothing out. Because this night, he didn't say tomorrow. He said, man of God, this night, amen, I will come and visit your house. And when I see the blood, I will pass over. Amen. This night, I'm coming to your house. Amen. And if I see the blood, I will pass over. Amen. If God would come today to the houses of the people, would he see the blood? Would he pass over or would he enter in? And we know the end result. Amen. All the firstborn of Egypt, all the firstborn, amen, was the, had, a, had died. Amen. Why? Because the blood was not applied. I'm here to say today, amen, we've got to get it ready. We've got to get to the point, my God, because God is coming back and tomorrow is not promised. We've got to realize, amen, that we're living in the last days. We're living in perilous times. We cannot make excuses anymore on why we ain't serving God. We cannot have reasons enough, amen, to say why I'm not going to church. Because now is the day of salvation. My God, in Matthew 24, Jesus, amen, sat upon the Mount of Olives, amen, and his disciples came to him privately and said, what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? Amen. What shall be the sign of the coming and the end of the world? Lord, give us a sign, God, of your coming and the end of the world. Amen. Jesus said, take heed that no man deceive you. Amen. We know that deception is all over the world. Amen. Deception is all in people's homes, all in the church. Amen. Wherever you look, people trying to take advantage of you. Amen. Deception is everywhere. Amen. Then Jesus said, amen. My God, these signs, wars and rumors of wars. Amen. My God, is war all over the place. Amen. Amen. There's hundreds of countries. Amen. It's countries that you've never heard of in war right now. Amen. It's wars and rumors of wars. And then he said, nation shall be against nation. Kingdom shall be against kingdom. It should be famines in the land. It should be pestilence. Amen. It should be earthquakes in diverse places. Amen. My God. Amen. How many earthquakes are happening on a day-to-day basis? Amen. That we don't even hear about. Amen. But if you got in contact and with the people that monitor the earthquakes, Amen. You'll be astonished, amen, on the hundreds and thousands of earthquakes that take place on a daily basis, amen. Uh My God, I was driving just yesterday, uh, I was driving down uh, New Orleans Street, amen, 101st Street, uh, and I looked to my right, uh, and I see the sinkhole uh, sitting alongside the road, amen, uh, a big old hole, uh, and I said, my God, uh, that could have been that house that's sitting right next to it. Uh, That house could have got sucked up, amen. Uh, I'm here to tell you, amen, earthquakes uh, in time places. Uh, amen. You shall be my God. And then it says you shall be delivered uh, up to be afflicted uh, and you shall ki- and they shall kill you uh, and you shall be hated of all nations uh, for my name's sake. Uh, amen. How many saints of God? Uh, how many Christians getting gunned down? Uh, how many is being murdered? Uh, how many heads being chopped off uh, for the name of Jesus Christ? Uh, right. Amen. Maybe my God is just now starting in America. But if you go to some of these other countries, uh, it's been going on for years. Uh, right. Amen. It's been going on for decades uh, and for right. centuries, my God, uh, how people are being murdered uh, for the name of Jesus. Uh, and I'm here to tell you, it's all in the Word of God. Uh, yeah. It's all written, praise God. Uh, God is letting us know uh, these signs are going to follow. Uh, man shall be offended. Uh, how many people is offended uh, over the name of Jesus? Uh, yeah. If you go into Walmart uh, 
And you say, Jesus, Jesus. Amen. A matter of my God, just give it about 15, 20 minutes. They're going to call the police on you. Why? Because you called on the name of the Lord. Amen. My God. Many false prophets in the land. And then what? And then what? Amen. This is a tribulation. And then what? The Bible says immediately after the tribulation, there shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, coming in the clouds with power and great and great glory. So in other words, amen, all these things that we're seeing right now, amen, to wrap it all up, is going to be the coming of the Lord. Yeah. Jesus is going to come for his children, amen. It's not going to be before the tribulation, but it's going to be after the tribulation. God's going to come and deliver the saints of God. It says from the four winds of the earth, the angel will say, my God, the trumpet will blow. The angel will blow the trumpet and the dead in Christ shall rise. And everybody else shall be called together to meet him in the sky. Mm, come on. But we got to know the day. And my God, we got to know what we got to do today. Because tomorrow is not promised. My God, tomorrow is not promised. Look, the Bible says in Psalms chapter 90, verse number 10. Amen. It's, it's a song of Moses. This whole chapter is dealing with Moses. And it says, the days of our years are three score years and ten. The days of our years are three score years and ten. That's 70 years. Amen. And if by reason of strength they be four score years. That's 80 years. So in other words, amen, Moses was writing about, amen, the days of our years. Amen. It said three score and ten, that's 70. Amen. And four score if they have enough strength to make it to 80. Amen. And then it says this in verse number 12. Then Moses said, so, he said, so teach us to number our days. Teach us to number our days that we may be, my God, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Teach us, Lord, to number our days. If all of us live in 70 and if I have enough strength, 80, God then teach me to number my days that I may apply wisdom in my heart. Because you know what? When I reach that day where I don't see tomorrow, I got to be ready. I can't be getting ready on that day. I got to be ready on that day. Amen. So I'm here to say this. There are things happening all around us in our lives, of our families, in the lives of our friends, on the news, social media, in the weather, wars, in the family, in the church. Everything that is being shaken is being shaken. God is letting us know that he's about to wrap this thing up. Yes. There is a clarion call that's going across the nations that's saying, get ready, get ready, get ready. Yes. My God, get ready, get ready, get ready. In the book of Revelations, chapter 16, it lets us know the mindset of the people in the last days. And it talks about the angels as they open the vows and what takes place. And in Revelation 16, it says that the fourth angel was given power to scorch men with fire. The fourth angel was given power to scorch men with fire. And when he opened the vow and began to pour out fire, men were scorched with great heat. And they blaspheme the name of God, which had power over these plagues. And they repented not to give him glory. Mm. Now, look, now, look at the mindset of the people in the last days. We have drifted so far from God. We are so distant from God. We're so disconnected from God that if an angel comes and opens up a vessel, a container that just starts pouring fire upon the earth that we still won't repent. Mm -hmm. That we still won't give God glory. When we see an angel coming down from heaven, standing in the clouds with a big container dumping out fire, and the, and the Bible says the man still won't repent. How distant have we got from God? Why were they cussing God? Why were they blaspheming God? Amen. Why? Because God was messing up 
amen, the things that they desire. Remember Sodom and Gomorrah? Praise God. When God rained fire upon Sodom and Gomorrah, amen, and his lot's wife turned around and looked back, why was she looking back? Why? Because she, she was a citizen of Sodom and Gomorrah. Amen. That was her city. Amen. That's where she, that's where she met her husband at, was Sodom and Gomorrah. So she was concerned about, amen, what's going to take place, amen, after the fire destroys the city. So she looked back. Then you go on down, amen. And it says, my God. You would think that with all this going on in the world, that the people would be running to the church. They'd be running to Jesus. But why? Because the people understand that they're not ready. They ignore it and push it back. My God. I, I remember back in Waynesville about a brother by the name of Brother Leonard. He came to service several times. Some of y'all may remember him. But I remember one, one day, me and my wife had a conversation with him. And in this conversation, we asked him, what hinders you, man? What hinders you from working, you know, coming to Jesus and asking, asking for forgiveness? And his, his reply was, he says, I'm not ready. I'm not ready today. I'm just not ready. Because there are things in my life that I'm not willing to let go. He never came to church after that. He never came back again. All we did was ask him, what's hindering you, brother? God loves you, man. You, you can see God's calling you. What's hindering you? He said, I'm not ready today. I, I don't want to give up things that I like doing. So he left. And shortly after, they found him in the hotel room dead. My I'm saying all this to say this. Tomorrow's not promised to no good. Amen. We got to work it out today. Amen. We can't put we can't put it off to tomorrow anymore. Amen. What you can do today, do it today. Amen. Because tomorrow's not promised. There's people, there's things, there's places. Amen. God is speaking to his people. He's giving them divine direction, divine instruction on what he wants us to do. That's how much God loves us. Amen. He's telling us what we need to do. Hear his voice and take heed. Don't be just a hearer of the word, but be a hearer and a doer of what God is telling you to do. Because trust me, God loves you so much, he's not going to not speak to you and let you go to hell. He's going to let you know what he has for you. Amen. He loves you that much, amen. He fills you with his precious Holy Ghost, amen. Because he loves you. But tomorrow, say to God, tomorrow, those viewing tomorrow is not promised. Amen. What happened in South Carolina can happen today in any church across America. Amen. We got to make our business right with the Lord before it's too late. Amen. So I challenge, amen, all the saints of God, all those, amen, that are hearing the sound of this voice, amen. Don't leave today without getting right with the Lord. Amen. Because tomorrow is not promised. Amen. With every head bowed, every eye closed, we want to go to the Lord and pray. And we want to open these altars up for you. Amen. My God. Amen. Today, the book ends. Amen. There's no more playing church. It's no more running around, dodging. Amen. But Lord, we want, we want to be real starting right now, Lord. We want to be real today. We want to give you everything that we have in us, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Every head bowed, every eye closed. As we prepare to go into the Lord. Amen. Go into his presence. Go into prayer. As we seek his holy face. Amen. By God, by God. Some of y'all may want to come.